We're here at the Deland Sport Aviation Showcase, year number one, day number three. It's been a great three days. And we saw these couple of very pretty RV-12 sitting here. They look very similar and they got names all over the side of them and it caught our attention. And then we found the people behind it. So looking to Scott Malcolm here for giving us some information about it and your son, Matt Malcolm, who is now flying this. And we're gonna hear more about each of that. But first of all, welcome to the event. Thank and you. Uh, Scott, tell me a little bit about what this project is all about. We see right on your name tag here, it's the Eagle Nest Projects, and it's S on the end of that, so there's more than one of these, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Fill in some of the details for me, Scott. What Eagle's Nest Project is, is it's a high school build program where we promote STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, through providing kits to build a real flying two-seat airplane. So the students in the school that get selected for the program, they work with mentors, which are, which are typical people from uh, builders, mechanics, pilots, people that are willing to put in their time to mentor to these students to build these airplanes. And they work alongside of them, usually within a school year, and they build a real flying aircraft from kits that they can then use to go out and fly and work towards getting their private pilot's license. Does that mean it happens in one school year from kit to plane? The airplane that you're touching right here was assembled in seven months. Is that right? And it went to Sun and Fun in the second week of April, not painted. We got it painted afterwards. <laughs> you but know, we I won think up I did that. see an unpainted one there. I didn't know that yeah. was yours though. So We won up one. that though the second year and we were able not only to build the airplane but to get it painted and go to Sun and Fun painted the second year. Wow, that's that's quite remarkable. So the pair of them here are the ones we're talking about. We're now built. this is happening right here and Matt, you're part of this, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you go to the, uh, your shirt here is covered or your tag is covered enough. You go to the Circle Christian School and that's where you did this project here? Yeah, I got to do it at Circle Christian School, a private school. So. Okay, and, and that's kind of a new thing you mentioned. You've done it at some other schools, and i got to ask you a couple of questions because uh, for all the good they do, schools can be quite bureaucratic organizations. <laughs> There's a lot of administrators. They have a lot of rules. They've got your kids. They've got to be careful. I understand that, but it's kind of a serious thing to bring them something like this, and, and I can imagine all kinds of resistance going, no, 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 we don't want anything to do with that. That sounds dangerous or something. How would you respond to that kind of response to that kind of comment? Well, usually this is no different than a typical shop project that you would do in a public school, where they're using power tools such as band saws, grinders, drill presses, stuff that can hurt you. Yes, stuff that can hurt you. So there is, yes, there is the chance or the liability there, but it is no different than any other shop project. Once the airplane is then completed, they take the aircraft to the airport do the final assembly and the production acceptance paperwork for it and now you have a flying aircraft that then is housed at an airport where you can fly the airplane which belongs to Eagle's Nest Projects not to the school. I see okay so the school doesn't have ownership of the airplane or anything. And most of I them can't wouldn't want. Yeah I can't imagine how that would work. So show me both hands I want to see if you got all the fingers. Yep. Yes yeah. he did not bandsaw any fingers off. <laughs> Just kidding you here but how was the project to work on it? How much time did you spend yourself working on the project Matt? Uh, probably about 2,000 hours per year. You? 2,000? Each, each About 1,000. About 1,000 each a year. <laughs> he was there a lot. He liked it. <laughs> he wanted more. Well, you got two airplanes, so there's 2,000, I guess. But yeah. uh, anyway, so you come to school, you do you do all the all the usual, you know, reading reading and arithmetic and all that stuff, and then it's, uh, in a, is it in a shop class or is it after school? How does that part happen? Well, it was a little bit more unique because we were able to partner with Ember-Riddle and become an Aerospace Institute program oh, oh. where we did a dual enrollment. You're AS. very close to them. They're right, right in Daytona. You're in Orlando. That's close. So. And we ran uh, Principles of Aeronautical Science. So on Mondays, they would actually do the dual enrollment class and leave that to come back to the build afterwards. So on Mondays, they were doing both an Ember-Riddle course, which was good curriculum that went along with kind of the build, and then on Thursdays we came in and it was just the build sessions. So I see. Two okay. times a week for a just just two times a week. Two times a week. And you got this done in 24 weeks. In tw wow, yeah, I, that's kind of an amazing <laughs> number. That's not even a half a year. So, um, how many people are working in the project at any one time? How many of your buddies were working there with you when you did this, Matt? So on the first build we had 17 students, including me, and then on the second build we had 10. So there was 
there was a good mix of boys and girls that liked working on the airplane. Was it both? I was just going to ask that yep. question next. Uh, was it all guys, or were there some gals in there as well? Yeah, there's a lot of girls, and they they really brought a different element to it, and they they're more they're smile, more. Uh, <laughs> 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 they wanted to follow the plans. <laughs> they, they wanted to follow the plans. <laughs> you got to love women. If they give you plans, they mean for you to follow plans, and the guys go, nah, I, I could probably figure this out another way, I'm, which is good, too. I like innovation, but sometimes it's good to follow the book. So. Yep, follow the rules. <laughs> so it's good there was a mix of you then. That worked out well for that. Um, are, what's kind of the makeup of the kids that decide to join this? Are they are they all sort of you know mechanical geeks, or are some of them interested in other things and, and just got attracted to this? I think a lot of them were attracted to it, but maybe not necessarily understood what was most attractive about it. Some of well, them. How could they know before they got into right. it? Really, I mean, it all sounds cool to build an airplane, but some of them were looking at the engineering aspect of it. Some oh, of them okay. were looking that they wanted to be pilots. Some of them wanted to be aircraft mechanics. You never know. So I've got students that are going on that have got their pilot's license. I got students that are going on to AMP programs, and I got a bunch of students that are going on to engineering programs. So. It kind of lends itself well to all three of those course uh, or uh, career fields with the build. Well, and you know that's fair too. Not only their uh, what they're pursuing in their academic pursuits, but what they expect to do later on in life, or just what their general interest area right. is. You had a wide selection there, so uh, male and female, and a variety of different uh, uh, interest areas as they came into it. Um, uh, that's pretty fascinating. Did you work on both these projects, Matt? Yeah, on the first airplane, I got to be a builder, and the second, I got to be a mentor and work teaching the other students how to build the airplane. So, of those two, which was more fun? I think the second one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's better to pass the knowledge on than to acquire the knowledge in the first place. Yeah, because I wasn't like directly doing all the work all the time, so I was kind of getting to direct the work that was being done. Cool. Well, good for you. Well, that was a form of education for you that you probably didn't anticipate. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. So that's very good too. What role do you play in this, Scott? Uh, you, you must have had, I mean, this, okay, you, you got into it, you're building the airplane, you're having a great time, and you got it done, and all that's great, but there was some stuff that happened before you ever got to begin this. Give me mm -hmm. some of the background. To, to, uh, to give good credit here, my wife and I uh, okay. basically had to build the program. So we had to lay out the lesson plans, the, you know, throughout the school year, where we we're going to be in the build plans. And then we had to actually write down, you know, each quizzes. We had to make them because they weren't, it's yeah, never right. been done before. Where so we had that, to right. make all the quizzes. And then we had the students going in and reading the build plans. We had them watching videos that we had so that when they were coming into the build that they were prepared. Now, on my side, I had to be the answer guy. So I had to study the plans, <laughs> lay out the projects get every, the students assigned to the projects and the mentors to work with them on those projects. And then had to be there as a resource if any of those projects had any concerns where I could help them and f find the material or show them the skill that needed to be done to do them. But I, had a, I was very fortunate. I had great mentors that it, it was very easy, especially the second year because we had done it once before and we had a kind of had a pattern to it. First year was very, very hard. I can imagine that took a lot of hours. I mean, it gives a whole new slant to uh, mom and dad helping Junior with the with his homework. <laughs> okay, this is a little more than just some math problems at the end of the school day or something, isn't and it? We got to do it as a family. Uh, very fortunate the way that Circle Christian works is we're actively involved in our, in our students' education and we were able to run this as a family. So my younger son and my older son and my wife were back with us in every build session from beginning to end. Yeah, we didn't introduce your other son. He's around here somewhere, but he was a little camera shy. We'll call him <laughs> camera shy anyway. Uh, but both of them were participating in the project Absolutely. and another 25 people in addition over two years' time. Yeah, so tell me about when you first went to the school and you said, I got the, I, so I got this idea. What kind of response did you get? It, well, to be fair about this, I wasn't the first one to make the call. Eagle's Nest right. Project. You didn't invent this project. I didn't invent this project. You've just been a participant in it. Right. Okay. So there was a phone call made from Indiana to That's the, the director of the school okay. at the time was the headquarters for the for the Eagle's Nest projects and said, Hey, how would you like to build an airplane at your school? <laughs> and luckily on a cold call like that he didn't hang up on him. 
he at least listened him through and then as he started to say hey i don't know if you know the malcolm family and then they started realizing ah, okay. that it was, there was somebody a there okay. was a connection there was somebody from their school a family and and they wanted to talk about doing a build like this so for, it went from there to oh, that's yeah. pretty fast reception though that's not Very like let good. me take it to the committee under advisement and we'll let you know in five years well this call was to the founders of the school so yeah. <laughs> so well and again this is a private school so you didn't have every organization has got a certain amount of bureaucracy private or otherwise but yeah in, in, a, in a regular public school um, i'm imagining this would have been a more challenging project to get in are there any of the eagles nest projects in public schools Yes, there is. Most of them are in public schools. So they are accepting this idea of, mm -hmm. of, of the their way, kids building airplanes. That's yes. okay with them, huh? And uh, it actually lends itself really well to the program called Project Lead the Way. Project Lead the Way is an engineering program that has their own curriculum for engineering. And this kind of works out to be like a capstone project for the aerospace engineering path that they take. So it, it lends it. So McKinney and Houston the schools in Texas, they were running through the project Lean the Way. Okay. And it works really well for, with them. All for right. us, being a private school, we had to work and kind of build the curriculum on the backside. I see, okay. They were able to use something that somebody else had Existing prepared, but for curriculum. you, they said, well, you want this, help us out here, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. I mean, it gave you a real tight sense of involvement and a very interesting family thing, too, it sounds yeah. like. Uh, um, I mean, you've just been smiling about this the whole time we've been talking here, so clearly this is doing it for you. That's great, Matt, but uh, uh, how much is mom involved with this at mom, this point? Mom has put a lot of heart into this, and uh, she was the one that was behind the scenes, putting in hours of her time. And, and my you got to understand, my wife is not a mechanic or anything like that, but she was reading the build plans in detail <laughs> and making quizzes to, oh, she to, did confirm, the quizzes on this right, to confirm that the students were actually into the plans and studying before they came to the build. Because ultimately what we wanted was we wanted the students to show up and not say, hey, what are we doing tonight? They I should show there was up a program. knowing what the next part of the build was and have already looked through the plans, hopefully watched the videos, and they're basically going to come in and explain to the mentor what they're doing. Uh -huh. That is a whole other element. So that's some back... There's more to it than... What like program is this Eagle's Nest Project program? So over the last five years, this program has grown to the point where we have nine aircraft that are completed, six aircraft in the process of being completed, and another aircraft project beginning next school year. Are they all RV-12? They're all RV-12s. We stick with a standard. Well, why not? I mean, they've got it down as right. pro probably better than anybody. Vans has done a great job with the plans. They're laid out well to use as kind of like a curriculum for your courses. So I, you can't, other light sport airplanes, I'm sure, have plans that are laid out that way, but we found that the RV-12 lends itself for a high school program really well. Now, this is, we all know that this can be a light sport aircraft. It can be an experimental light sport aircraft. These are experimental amateur built. Is that correct? These are ELSA. Oh, they are ELSA then. Okay, and so they are so they are identical to the SLSA then, at least when you get done with it. They are a basically a spec airplane. And with that, Vans has got the production acceptance paperwork that once you go through that, you are confirming that this is just like a factory aircraft. So you, you've, you've had your hands all over this airplane. You feel at one with it in a way that many people can't <laughs> even appreciate. Um, how about the flying part? The flying is just, it's amazing. No. How much have you done? Uh, I've flown for quite a while. Well, how many hours? Give me a guess. Uh, probably. 150 hours. Oh wow, 150 hours. Okay, you're pretty experienced with this thing then. And I understood your other son flew you to an airport. Now he's not even old enough to have a license yet. But that's okay as long as dad mm -hmm. is qualified and along with him, and you certainly are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was able to fly the airplane too then. Oh yeah, he's uh, also flown me to Oshkosh, to the, <laughs> the air show at Oshkosh. Very cool. A nine hour cross country flight. Is that and right? That Excellent. was when he was uh, 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love these stories lot, like this. A lot, a lot of fun. That's They're a great wonderful. airplane to fly. And what a wonderful family experience. Does mom like to go fly with the boys? Yes. Mom likes to fly with me. Well, yes, sure. She can't fly with your brother yet. I understand that. But, uh, he's saying him over me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. We're going to let it go right there because that was a good one at the end. Give me a web address where we can find out some okay. more stuff. www.eaglesnestprojects.com 
Com. Okay, we'll have it up on the screen so everybody knows how it's spelled and everything. Thanks okay. so much for talking to us here uh, again at the DeLand Sport Aviation Conference, year number one here. You've had a good response. People have looked at the airplanes and enjoyed it. I think it's been it. great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we'll great look show. forward to see you at another show somewhere, and uh, who knows who will fly in, but we'll find that out later. Once again, Scott Malcolm, Matt Malcolm, I'm Dan Johnson, and thanks for joining us here at the Sport Aviation, at the uh, DeLand Sport Aviation Conference. Showcase. You can find lots more about the RV-12 and many other light sport aircraft like kit aircraft and ultralights on bydanjohnson.com. Please come next year and you'll see more about this exciting project. Thank you.